Hello, everyone, and welcome to this spotlight session. Um, our topic today is about how Rodan and Fields transformed its enterprise data platform with Confluent and Google Cloud. I'm Priya Shivakumar, and I lead product management for Confluent Cloud, specifically focused on customers uh, with large scale use of Kafka. I'm really excited to be hosting this session with Jason Mathiota from Rodan and Fields and David Sabater from Google Cloud. But let me begin the session by introducing Confluent. Here at Confluent, we are on a mission to set data in motion. It's a new category of data infrastructure that's changing uh, the way uh, we compete and it's key to winning in the digital economy. Across every industry, companies are becoming digital first and large portions of their businesses are being defined in software as opposed to just being enabled by it. Every day, customer experiences are being completely reimagined. Requesting a ride through an app is way easier and better than calling a cab. Online shopping and omnichannel retail is changing the way we shop. And gone are the days of waiting in long lines at your local bank. The common commonality or the common theme across all of these modern businesses is that they have truly mastered the art of harnessing real-time data. The data at these organizations is flowing in real time and is constantly in motion across systems, applications, and environments every time a customer clicks, types, or swipes. Delivering these experiences, however, requires a new way of thinking and comes with a new set of requirements for the data infrastructure. Traditional systems are not built for data in motion, and this is where Confluent comes in. Confluent was founded in 2014 by the creators of Apache Kafka, the heart of the data in motion movement, and one of the most successful open source projects in the world. Today, it's used by more than 70% of the Fortune 500. At Confluent, we've built a differentiated cloud native platform that is the industry standard for data in motion. We bring the full capability of Kafka and its ecosystem to companies all over the world so that they can build data in motion applications quickly and take it to market quickly. We're thrilled to partner with leaders like Rodan and Fields and GCP to deliver them. Now I'd like us to turn our attention to our special guests today. We are joined by Jason Mathiota, Head of Enterprise Data at Rodan and Fields, and David Sabater, Data Analytics Product Manager at Google Cloud. Thank you both for joining us today. Uh, would you mind introducing yourself and telling us more about your roles and responsibilities? Hi, Priya. Thanks for having me today. Um, Jason Mathiota. Um, I head up our enterprise platforms and data engineering teams at Rodan and Fields. I've uh, been with the company for about eight years and uh, oversee everything that is uh, data related. Um, prior to RF, uh, I've been in a variety of different technology leadership roles in different industries, uh, both in corporate IT as well as uh, consulting and, and, and software. Um, but data has always been core to what I do and how I approach business solutioning as well as enterprise architecture. Um, so thanks for having me today. I look forward to telling our story a little bit. Thanks, Jason. Um, and David? Hi, Priya. Uh, sure thing. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me. Super happy to be here today with uh, Jason and yourself talking about how Confluent and Google Cloud delivers value to our customers, such as uh, Rodan and Fields. My name is David Sawada Dinter, and I am outbound product manager for our data analytics portfolio at Google Cloud. Uh, I've been at Google for about three years now, and during that period, I've been helping customers with their most challenging problems around streaming analytics and data strategy. Back to you. So Jason, tell us more about Rodan and Fields and walk us through how you see technology transforming the future of your industry. Absolutely. Uh, so Rodan and Fields is a uh, premium skincare brand headquartered in San Francisco. Uh, we have operations in, uh, throughout the United States, as well as Canada, Australia, and Japan. Uh, we were founded in 2008 by two uh, Stanford trained doctors, Dr. Katie Rodan and Dr. Kathy Fields. And the, uh, <clears throat> we've grown the company to over 500 employees and over 300,000 uh, enrolled uh, active independent consultants that uh, ultimately represent our brand. Uh, and we have more than 2 million uh, active preferred customers uh, that do business with us on a monthly basis. Um, we operate in the direct selling channel. So uh, those independent consultants are uh, really the ones that are our sales organization. They're doing the marketing and the selling of the brand. We provide 
three main pillars uh, to those to those consultants. We provide a brand, the brand, the product, and then the the, the platforms they need to conduct business. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, all the pro when they uh, have a sale, all those sales are placed through our commerce platform. We do the uh, all the transaction uh, settlement as well as the fulfillment of the orders. So it's really the consultant's business. We're giving them the tools and empowering them uh, to conduct that business. Um, we have many similarities to large retail retailers or large uh, e-commerce organizations uh, when it comes to our technology landscape. But what, what's unique about our business model is the are those independent consultants, and they are on a monthly uh, business cycle. So the last day of every month is uh, like a Black Friday for us. We it's our biggest day, our biggest sales day of the month, and so a lot of our uh, performance engineering and scalability comes around. Uh, how do we be more performant and, and, and scale on month end? The, uh, and so that's a, kind of where we're gonna go today with our story is how we get data in the hands of those consultants as well as in the other systems that need to consume that data, especially during those peak times. So back to you, Priya. Fantastic, thanks, David. Um, I'm really excited to hear about the, the transformation that Rodan and Tools undertook uh, and it's it's, is that kind of end-to-end -end transformation that's really required to harness the power of streaming data. It's more than bolting on an iPhone application or automating an existing process. And at the very heart of that transformation is data in motion. And according to IDC, 97% uh, of organizations are already beginning to collect and harness streaming data. So continuing on that theme of transformation, David, how do you see Google Cloud enabling the transformation and why as the CIO of a company, I choose Google Cloud to solve some of my toughest challenges. Right, a uh, good question, Priya. In my opinion, the most important aspect is to see the world from our customers and end users perspective. Uh, but to be able to solve their most challenging problems first, you need a battle tested platform as a foundation, right? And I believe we have that platform at Google, uh, proven already with uh, nine products with more than 1 billion users each, powered by the same cloud technology we are offering to our customers through Google Cloud Platform, including data analytics services such as BigQuery, Dataflow, and Babsup, but also to our partners such as Confluent, hosting uh, the managed services on top of that same platform. But that's not sufficient. Uh, we need to meet where customers are, and our vision is to offer a simplified, open, and intelligent cloud, uh, Google Cloud Platform. First, simplified to remove the complexity and ensure peace of mind, you still need enough sophistication to drive continuous innovation through real-time analytics, scalability, and AI. But you get the simplicity of a highly automated, fully integrated data platform, having access, for instance, to one of the fastest and fully managed Kafka services with Confluent Cloud hosted on GCP. Secondly, we offer an open data cloud with a persuasive ecosystem to break down data silos. Uh, to be able to respond at any time and to keep discovering new insights with every type of data, including Google Sound data assets, while at the same time being able to deploy anywhere with a strong, a strong integration with open source frameworks such as Kafka. Finally, intelligent uh, to make customers' data the most valuable strategic asset by democratizing insights with a secure and scalable platform with built in machine learning, but also deploying, evaluating, and using more ML models with fewer lines of code, used by streaming analytics pipelines with Kafka in Confluent Cloud, for instance. Uh, I hope that answered your question, Priya. Back to you. Great, thanks, David. So a strong developer platform and a complete ecosystem with native integrations is critical to be able to make these event-driven apps, to take these event-driven apps to market quickly. So you might be wondering, what are some of these uh, event-driven apps and what are some examples? How does that apply to your industry? Uh, the examples that we see are very varied and innovative. Uh, to name a few, uh, there's inventory management in retail, there's connected patient records in healthcare, uh, real-time fraud detection in financial services, and advanced navigation in the automotive industry, and so on and so forth. Um, Jason, could you share some examples of how real-time data is being used at Rodan and Fields and who uses it? Absolutely. Um, for us, 
you know, this was definitely a, a, a data project, but our transformation it was part of probably a multi-phase or multi-year digital transformation that I think a lot of companies are going through. We started by just moving some primary applications to the cloud. We knew we wanted to get out of our traditional data center, move to public cloud, and we landed on uh, on Google um, and 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 had a great experience working with them early on to move SAP our SAP application and workloads, and then move our e-commerce application workloads. Um, and then at that point, we really were um, had a the, the strategy started to reveal itself that we should really rebuild our data architecture, and that was also not only not only to modernize and be able to achieve some of the business benefits I'll get to, but um, just to shift out, to continue shifting out of our legacy footprint in the data center. We had large uh, bare metal uh, database servers um, that couldn't migrate to the cloud. We were going to, it was going to be very challenging to migrate those to the cloud, um, as well as uh, what a lot of companies probably still live with today, which is database replication, replica after replica after replica, data hoarding, um, and the in, uh, and then batch interfaces, a lot of batch integration. Um, and so we just had this, uh, this ball of twine that we call, you know, our spaghetti ball that we referred to as our Achilles heel. That was at the end of the day, no matter how agile we thought we were or how much we were trying to improve front end experiences, we had this back end Achilles heel that was slowing us down, which was our data architecture. And we knew we needed to change that. Um, and so, Event-based, uh, an event-based architecture was uh, was where we landed. We sort of didn't see any other way, and we we, we landed on Kafka as the platform that would help us do that. Um, we, but we weren't um, we're not the largest technology organization in the world, and we knew that um, you know managing Kafka not only would require some expertise that we didn't have, um, but also that wasn't the wisest choice where we wanted to to spend our money and, and our dollars. So. Uh, Confluent became uh, uh, the apparent um, solution for that as a managed service provider, being able to quickly spin up and manage our uh, Confluent our, uh, and, and Kafka clusters for us, as well as provide and inject that immediate kind of um, subject matter expertise and the technical expertise that we needed to get going and, uh, and achieve our goals. The, um, the problem that we really were setting out to solve um, was not only just replacing a data architecture, we had to have business value. Um, and so the business value we were, that, that we were trying to solve first and foremost was how do we get data to our consultants faster? As I mentioned, on the last day of every month, it's a really key time for them. They're trying to close sales, as many sales as they can, and, and, get, and, and enroll future uh, customers. And for them, it's, um, you know, it's that last day of the month. They have till midnight to get everything in, and they need data to know how to operate. In the old world, uh, it could take anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour or more for a transaction occurring on our website to the time that a consultant could actually go into their back office portal and see that data and know which actions to take next. So now, um, you know, we were able to, what we focused on was how do we get that data to them sooner? So now we're able to replace that. We can get accounts and order information almost real time, sub-second uh, uh, movement of data um, uh, across our platforms. And then even on the data that requires more contextual or transformation, maybe it's a, it's, it requires aggregates or KPI uh, calculations, we're still getting that data to our consultants sooner and also to our business partners internally, um, just using the power of BigQuery and, and Google Cloud and other modern data and technologies that, um, that surround Kafka. Um, so it, it's been a, a, a great experience for us um, from both the Confluent side as well as the GCP side to, to achieve some of those business cases. Uh, we've also replaced um, how data flows real time throughout internally in the organization. So we replaced our data warehouse. We now have a data warehouse that updates uh, very frequently versus um, you know, a, a couple times a day, which is where we were. We have data flowing to our CRM platforms for uh, and, and triggering more action-based uh, customer targeting. And where we're really going next is now that we have the data architecture replaced, um, we're gonna build on this platform. We have a roadmap for to move us more into uh, headless seamless commerce and uh, be able to do commerce anywhere. And that's all gonna be driven by uh, 
microservices and uh, and the data data layer that we've put in place um, through this project. So looking forward to, to some of the things that we can do with this new platform. How, how exciting, um, especially going from 30 minutes to some seconds for order processing. I think um, it's always great to hear about these use cases. Um, now let's switch to your partnership with Google and Confluent. Uh, what was Rodan and Fields looking to achieve and why did you choose to partner with Confluent and Google specifically? A lot of it was, um, you know, as I mentioned before, the um, um, some of it was just who showed up as as the best partners. So um, you know, it was it was the technology was a part of it, uh, but who understood the problem we were trying to solve? Who had a vested interest in wanting to help us and got excited about trying to solve these problems for us? Um, you know, like I said, we're not the biggest uh, technology shop in the world. There's bigger problems to solve out there. Um, but we didn't hear that from Google or Confluent. Both wanted to help us be successful and help us um, uh, not only achieve um, the benefits of their platforms, and, and but uh, help us really solve our business problems. We really felt that they cared. Um, for Confluent, it was it was more of that managed service, especially that, that um, started the relationship. I knew that we couldn't do this. It wasn't a wise choice where I wanted to put my dollars. Um, I wanted to uh, leverage the expertise for the administration and um, uh, of the Kafka platform. Um, and so I found uh, I found Confluent uh, the, the best choice for us to do that. And they were also able to help us jumpstart our project quickly by injecting that talent and the education and architecture that we needed because we didn't have any of that. We, I mean, I this project was only going to be successful if we leveraged the existing team that had been around and knew all the ins and outs of, of, of our current data flows and our databases and where all the skeletons were buried. So they had to come up to speed quickly on all these new technologies. Uh, and we needed the, the, the help from Confluent and Google to do that as well. And so they were quickly parachuted in the experts that we needed, not to take over the project um, and, and, and do it for us, but to teach us how to, how to do it and to help us uh, you know, become competent very quickly ourselves. So um, we couldn't have done it without you. So I, I want to thank both companies because um, everyone who was involved had a great experience. I have had um, you know, numerous people thank me for being able to be a part of this project and the invaluable experience they had learning from you guys and uh, and the new tools and skills that they've gained. So thank you. That's so great to hear. Uh, thank you, Jason. And, and that's a theme that I uh, see often uh, working with Confluent Cloud customers, uh, that speed to market is so critical. And sort of uh, offloading the management of large scale infrastructure really enables uh, customers to sort of focus on applications and, and differentiation. And the features of a fully managed service like self-serve, elastic scaling, uh, reliability, resiliency, all of that uh, really help with faster time to market with lower TCO. Um, that brings us to the end of the session. Um, I really enjoyed speaking with both of you. And as we conclude, uh, Jason, would you like to share any final thoughts uh, or takeaways with our audience? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think one thing that, you know, a couple things come to mind just from uh, lessons learned and best kind of best practices that um, I think people need to uh, take into consideration as they, they they go through their projects and their transformations, um, especially when, when it comes to data. Um, I think the, the biggest thing and the first and foremost thing that has really um, revealed itself to us and will be an ongoing uh, initiative for at Rodan and Fields is uh, maturing our enterprise data governance program. Uh, when you move from this, the, this batch oriented world to a real time world, um, th there's no time uh, literally in, in, in the data latency to cover up your, your data, um, data quality and data integrity issues. So you really have to have um, uh, the foresight of what, how systems and your, and your business processes are outputting data, because that's the data you're going to have to work with if you want to present it real time. Sure, you can clean it up and you can, uh, you can patch it up, but anything you do to touch that data is going to uh, incur some sort of uh, latency cost. And we wanted to avoid that as much as possible. Um, the other area is um, uh, just around um, 
you know, not being afraid to to try uh, and and fail and 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 back up and start over again. We did that multiple times. Um, it is a paradigm shift. This is, you know, you're, most of these guys come from relational database backgrounds and traditional data warehouse and ETL backgrounds. Um, as you move to the cloud and you start working with these modern data technologies, it is a paradigm shift for a lot of folks. And the, the way that you would have solutioned in the past is not how you would solution in the cloud. Um, and so, uh, you know, try things out. And if it doesn't, you don't get the results you want, I guarantee there's 10 other ways that you could try it and, and, and that might be better. So, um, you know, learn on the fly and um, don't be afraid to back up a sprint and try again. And then the last thing I would add for us, because we were, you know, again, we were, this was all about real time data for us and trying to get it where it needs to be as fast as possible. Um, performance engineer from the very beginning. So, uh, and that's sort of that trial and error, back to the trial and error, error scenario. Um, the, uh, in the days of old for us, performance engineering was always like the last step of our project. It's like, we'd get the code done and then we'd go optimize the code to be efficient. Um, it doesn't, it, it, you're gonna be much more better off to set those performance SLAs and do the performance engineering upfront in your project. So those are the things I'll leave people with. Um, I think they're very valuable to consider as you, as you move forward on your journey. And again, Priya, thank you for having me here today. Uh, I want to thank Confluent and I want to thank the, the Google Cloud team um, for their great support and services that, uh, that they provide us. Thanks, Jason. Uh, and thanks, David. Thank you both for taking the time to participate in this session. Uh, we appreciate the insights you've provided to our audience uh, from your perspectives. Uh, my name is Priya and thank you for attending the session. To learn more about Rodan and Fields, uh, Google Cloud and Confluent, please visit the respective websites uh, displayed on the screen.